Hi everyone, um, welcome back to my channel if you've been here before, if not, hello and welcome. I'm Rodina Witching and today I want to talk a little bit about the um, process of telling friends and family that you're a witch or pagan or um, if you're only very just starting out, how to approach the topic to um, people that you're living with at the time and you're you're wanting to let them know what you're doing, what you're starting to study. So this is commonly termed the, the broom closet in witchy communities. I don't really like that term because it's very similar to the um, LGBT community. They're coming out of the closet and expressing um, sexuality and gender and that sort of stuff. So I don't actually like referring to the witchcraft process in the same way because I don't think it's um, I don't think it's necessary to re refer to it in a similar way and I think that's a little bit insensitive I guess. So I usually call it the witchy wardrobe or the spooky basement or that sort of stuff instead of. Um, so that was my little disclaimer for the start of the video. So I'm going to share a couple of my experiences with this process myself and then I've got uh, 10 tips to the new witches of um, just tips for your own journey I guess as well as still practicing while nobody knows. So my experiences have been pretty good so far but I also I, <laughs> I very carefully picked my moments with this. So when I wanted to start practicing, I've been researching um, Wicca, especially for quite a couple of, um, quite a few months actually, and it was um, New Year's and we were having sort of a family gathering thing. And I said to my mum, I've been researching this, there's a tradition of studying for a year and a day before you decide that you actually are um, a witch or pagan or whatever. And I think I'm going to try and do it. And so my mum, um, my mum actually knows quite a bit about paganism and that sort of thing. She, um, she had collected some, um, Titania books, which are white magic books, um, when I was very little. So I actually grew up reading those books sort of flippantly as sort of fairy tale storytelling ideas for games. So it wasn't that much of a shock to her that I suddenly went, there's this spirituality, I want to study it. So she was actually really accepting of that and within a couple of days the rest of my family, my sisters and my dad, all knew that I was starting on this journey as well. So my close family is very accepting of the fact of this and I think it's because it's not an entirely new concept to them. Um, uh, none of us were raised in a particular faith. We were allowed to grow up and learn and decide for ourselves what we wanted to believe in. Um, so, you know, and both my parents, their philosophy is as long as you're not trying to force somebody else to um, believe the same things as you, you go for it, you do what you want. So, um, I was very lucky in that respect. Um, so the next one I wanted to talk about was um, telling my friends. So my two best friends now um, are practicing pagans as well. They're different styles of paganism from me, um, but we all do rituals together during the Sabbaths. And they have started learning um, basically after I spoke to them about myself being pagan and how long I've been practicing for. So at this point I've been practicing for about nine years um, and this was a couple of years ago now. Um, we were all talking about different spiritual beliefs and also different, um, different I guess paranormal experiences with ghosts and that sort of thing. And one of them joked that her um, her, her dad had referred to me and my family as druids 
and we had a little bit of laugh, bit of a laugh about that. And I then went, well, actually, I am actually pagan, and that is something that I have stuck true to. Is basically, I don't tell people that I am pagan or I am a witch or I do certain things like tarot or crystals or that sort of stuff. I don't tell people outright. I don't deny any of those things and I wait until someone asks me explicitly. So that is something that I have very much stuck true to is just, you know, had discussions with people about different things. I've never said, you know, I've, I've never outright said, oh yes, well, I'm pagan and this, this and this. You know, I've never done that. But whenever someone has asked, you know, what is your religion or um, are you interested in this? I have been I have been quite forward and quite truthful about it and went, oh, yes, well, this is what I do. This is what I consider myself as. And, you know, leave the discussion open for questions to be answered and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> so telling them about my experiences with it and my practice was, uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a bit nerve wracking at the time, but I had already known from previous conversations with them that they were open to that sort of thinking anyway. Um, I, I very much take note of um, when conversations about history or culture or that sort of thing come up, um, if someone starts talking about open ideas and um, religious spiritual facts or something like that, I do always take a note of their reaction to different beliefs and that sort of thing. And that's another thing that I wanted to say is before you tell anyone, listen to what their opinions are about the world and that sort of thing. So, so listen to someone starting to talk about, you know, holiday celebrations or maybe even, you know, um, geneolo genealogy things. Like if someone starts saying, oh yeah, well I have family that's Irish and that sort of stuff and, you know, we have a, um, uh, we always make fairy gardens in the backyard when we go to the grandparents' house or that sort of thing. If they're already open to talking that way about certain concepts, then you know you're fairly safe starting to reveal some of those spiritual beliefs, some of those beliefs are in a little bit away from the norm and definitely ones that involve um, natural processes like the moon and um, different energy forms and that sort of thing and you can always just say that it's an interest in such and such a concept like um, yoga is very common right now right so with yoga you have a exercise you have energy and you have spirituality all tied in with this one practice so yoga is a practice yoga isn't a religion right but it's fairly normal to have all of those concepts intertwining in this one activity um so my last experience that i wanted to touch on quite quickly was um talking to my boyfriend about my spirituality so he was a bit different um he didn't ever ask outright he's not a religious person by nature um he still isn't even though he does do witchy things with me every now and again now um but uh we had been dating for six months something like that and it was getting to Samhain it was getting to Halloween and I decided that I wanted to tell him about that side of it because my friends and I were going to be doing something and I sort of wanted him to be involved with it or at least be aware of it that it would be happening. And so I sort of, I sat him down and I went, okay, I want to tell you something. It's a little bit out of the ordinary, but I am pagan. I am this, this and this. And he was very confused to start off with and I'm still... Um, explaining lots of different concepts to him as they're coming up with my own practice. I'm explaining more of that stuff to him um, as I go. But he is very supportive of that. Um, and I think that definitely, like, him knowing um, my other interests and that sort of thing beforehand, like, he already knew that I was into crystals and I like burning candles and all that sort of stuff, and I'm very artistic in nature. I always have 
drawn witches or written about witches in stories and that sort of stuff so he already knew all of those other sides of it um it was just the um the, the beliefs and the, the religious aspect, I guess, to it that was new to him. And that I suddenly went, okay, this, this, and this that's been on my desk for a while and you've seen, that is an altar and I do magic there. And so it wasn't that much of a shock because he already knew the small things that went into the big thing. Um, so, and he has been doing um, spells with me occasionally um, and... Uh, a lot of things that tie into like mundane tasks, like um, cleaning up. Um, if I'm doing like a witchy thing to do with cleaning up, he will help me with that, which is quite nice. Um, and he understands that it's important to me. And if it's important to me, then he's going to respect it and he's going to ask questions when he's confused and that sort of thing. So that's really nice and really... Um, helpful and supportive and that's really good um so now i'm going to do my 10 tips for new witches um people that want to be um to start telling other people that they're a witch or for people that can't tell people a witch for whatever reason um so these are all tips that go with different things like that so the first one is you never have to tell anyone if you don't want to. So if you find this very secretive and very personal and you don't want anyone getting into your business with this, you have no obligation to tell anybody ever, even on your deathbed, that you're pagan or you're a witch or you believe a certain thing, right? Just because a lot of people find that they have to tell people doesn't mean you have to. You never have to tell anyone if you don't want to. Uh, number two is be careful revealing spiritual beliefs to friends at school and co-workers. So I say this um, in, in hindsight, I guess, because I am at university now. I'm not at a normal school that I go to every day. And um, my work means I don't really have co-workers, but I do have... Um, it's more of a client-based work that I'm doing at the moment. So with friends at school, definitely you need to know that A, they're going to be accepting of that fact, and B, they're not going to tell everybody in school and they're not going to tell teachers especially. So if you, you know, if you like me, are going to a Catholic school or went to a Catholic school, if you told the wrong person, it could go to the principal and you could get expelled from the school just for that. You know, I know um, not my school particularly, but some of the schools in my area, I know that if you are caught reading Harry Potter at that school, you can get a detention, you can get the book taken off of you and that sort of thing. So it can be that extreme. So definitely be careful of who you tell at school, co-workers especially as well. Be careful who you tell when you're at work because you don't want to get... Um, penalised or laid off at work just because you told this one person that, you know, you're into crystals or you went and had a tarot reading with somebody or that sort of thing, right? The place I worked before this job that I currently have was a coffee shop and actually some of my co-workers there were pagan of an inclination as well. There was at least two or three that did have a um, similar spiritual structure or had practiced one of the practices that I'm into as well. I know even my boss had had tarot readings done for her before and she had um, quite druid ancestry as well. So none of that was really a problem but I never um, revealed all of my spirituality if that makes sense. So tip number three is tools don't make the witch but you don't have to master magic without them. So you will see everywhere, every post for beginner witches or baby witches, you do not need tools. But you don't have to be a master of a grounding technique before you ever use any tools, if that makes sense. So you don't have to buy a $50 wand, right? 
But if you find a stick out in, you know, the backyard, at your local gardens, even on the beach, piece of driftwood, you don't have to not use that in favour of using your intention. Because if that helps you visualise what you're meant to be doing, if that helps you get into a certain mood where you feel more witchy, then it's helpful, right? And I think that's what a lot of people mean by your intention is the most important, not the tools. But if tools are helping you reaffirm your intention and think about it better, then you can source them out of anything. You don't have to buy specifically witchcraft tools to do that. Number four, be conscientious of family and people you live with. So this is close to the one about friends and co-workers. With your family, especially a close family, if you know that you would be kicked out of your house or be left homeless, or if family members would refuse to speak to you after you've told them, don't tell, don't tell them. Wait until you've moved out. You know, the same goes for roommates. If you know that a roommate would be especially horrible to you or kick you out or that sort of thing, if you told them, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Keep it secret for a bit. Wait until you're living on your own and then, you know, blast out the witchy altar on the dining table once a month, you know? Um, and also be fair to them as well. You know, if they don't share your beliefs, then you... You don't want to be the bad guy by flaunting them. Um, because it's their space too. They live they live in the same place as you. Number five is utilise mundane objects before magical ones. Before strictly magical ones, right? So, this is just a jar that I have decorated as an altar candle jar. It's got a tea light in the bottom. Just a normal mason jar from dollars and cents, right? I didn't spend a fortune getting it. It was probably about two dollars, if that. And it works just as good as something that was handmade off Etsy for two hundred dollars, right? So always try and use mundane objects. Use a pencil for a wand, you know. Use a um, pencil case to hold your tarot cards, you know. All sorts of things, you know. Use use a teacup or use tea as a potion rather than trying to get spell ingredients and making a jar and then having to burn all of the objects and all that sort of thing. Number six, the most important magical ingredient is you. And what I mean by that specifically is not just your intention, but if you want to make something work, you need to show up and make the magic work. You need to um, you need to do the spell and you need to do the magical working to start off with. And the other thing is, magic doesn't work unless you're actively trying to make it work in the normal sense as well as in the magical sense. So if you do a spell for a career change, you also need to be showing up and taking your resumes out somewhere as well. So the most important magical ingredient is you because you have to do half of the work to also make the magic work in real life. Um, number seven, if someone really cares about you, they will accept you. If someone, if a friend or a partner or anything like that doesn't accept you when you then admit you're pagan, then they didn't really like some of the other bits about you anyway, right? Um, number eight, if there's a possibility you could end up homeless, jobless, expelled from school, don't tell those people and don't practice in a space someone could find you. So... Um, there are so many ways to do magic without it being obvious. If something is going to happen to you that is so bad that you could end up having no money, no home to go, you know, um, uh, be kicked out of school, if any of those like larger repercussions could happen from you telling someone, don't tell anyone, don't let them have the chance to do that to you. Uh, number nine, always look for digital and astral ways to practice. So, five minutes of a Google search of going astral magic, astral spells, um, uh, or digital witchcraft, five minutes of that and you will find 50 odd ways to practice without it actually being physical, with it being on your phone, on your laptop, doing it in your own head as a meditation practice as well, is so helpful and you don't need any tools for that, you just need your own head and it still makes the same results. I still work this way sometimes. And number 10, 
no witch ever started with a fancy altar, all the tools they could want, a completely open practice, a coven at their disposal, or a daily practice. Witchcraft takes time, and if you rush yourself, you'll miss some important information. And you'll miss some fun experiences as well. If you don't start at the beginning, if you try and start or don't start until you've got X, Y, Z, you're never going to get anywhere and you're going to miss out on the actual things that you're meant to be learning. And it's so much more fun when you've made your practice your own and you've made it personal. So that's all today everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope there were some useful tips for you all. Uh, if you want to stick around and see what I'll be getting up to next, you can subscribe, you can like to the channel, and if you have anything more to ask about um, practicing in secret or coming out to friends and family, let me know in the comments, um, and I'll see you all later. Bye!